What we're going to do now is go through some steps in order to build a Lewis structure. And this is going to be a big time focus of these first several chapters. Um, I encourage you to go through all the steps all the time. Um, we're going to do a lot of these. And after a while, it'll get honestly a little boring. And I totally understand. Trust me, I've been there. I understand. However, it's easy to skip some steps along the way. So at least keep them in the back of your mind while you go through it. If you follow these steps, you'll be able to do all of these problems with no problem. Um, what we're trying to do again is figure out where electrons are placed in molecules and then make predictions from there. So let's get into what it takes to build a Lewis structure. First thing you have to remember is that the number of valence electrons is equal to the group number. Gotta use the American quote-unquote version of the periodic table, but that's important. That's going to be really helpful to us. Another thing that's going to be helpful to us in building Lewis structures is that as a rule of thumb, it's not an absolute rule, but as a rule of thumb, groups 1a through 4a will have a number of bonding pairs equal to their group number by default. So what that means is boron right there is group 3A, all right? And boron will usually have three bonding pairs. Now, I said usually. It's not all the time, all right? But if you have to guess, boron would usually have three. Carbon is in group four. Carbon will usually have four bonding pairs around it. It's more likely that carbon will have four bonding pairs all the time than boron will have three bonding pairs all the time. We'll talk about that later, but for groups 1a through 4a, that's a relatively good rule of thumb. Groups 5a through 7a, the bonding pairs is going to equal 8 minus the group number. So there's nitrogen. Nitrogen is in group 5. And if you had to make a guess how many bonding pairs would be around nitrogen, you would say 8 minus the group number. Nitrogen is 5, so 8 minus 5. Nitrogen will usually have 3 bonding pairs around it. And again, that's not all the time the case, but more often than not, nitrogen's going to have three. Notice here on these molecules, the drawings, there's one, two, three lone pairs around boron, and there's also three, or three individual electrons, excuse me, there's also three individual electrons around nitrogen. And if something else comes up, atom X with its own electron, it's going to take an electron and share it with that one electron on boron to make a bonding pair. This is where the three comes from, and the same will happen with nitrogen. However, like I said, you're going to see exceptions here. So this is just kind of an overall rule, but not a de facto thing to hold on to hardcore. Knowing that, all right, for most of the molecules we're going to look at, and notice there I said most, there's going to be exceptions, but most of the time, the number of bonding pairs plus lone pairs around an atom is going to equal four. Now, that's most of the time, all right? It does a pretty good job on the outside atoms. It does a fairly good job on the inside atoms, and there are exceptions all over the place, and we're going to go through it. However, most of the time, bonding pairs plus lone pairs around an atom will equal four. In the Chem 100 series at Mount Hood, almost all the time, actually I think all the time, we would have this be the rule, right? Because there's a lot more times when this rule does apply than doesn't apply. But anyway, in the back of your mind, just realize that more often than not, bonding pairs plus lone pairs around a central atom most of the time will equal four. But in Chem 222, not all the time. The octet rule is what this rule is called. If there are four pairs and there's two electrons per pair, four times two is eight. That's where the octet eight comes from. And uh, most of the time, the atoms will want to follow the octet rule. Like I said, it's pretty good on the outer atoms, like the atoms on the edge of a molecule, and it's pretty good on the atoms inside a molecule. But there will be exceptions, so I'm just letting you know. All right, let's look into this a little bit more.
Let's use ammonia, which is NH3, as an example of building a Lewis structure. And again, if you go through these steps, you will be good in this class. First thing you want to do is you want to count up how many valence electrons are in ammonia, because only the valence electrons will be involved with bonding. The core electrons will not. And you can probably remember that the group number equals the number of valence electrons. So nitrogen is group five, hydrogen is group one. We have three hydrogens, so three times one, plus the five for nitrogen. That means there's a total of eight valence electrons. Now, most of the time in this class, we're going to talk about pairs of electrons. So eight divided by two, we're going to have four pairs of electrons in ammonia. And those pairs, as we talked about earlier, can be both lone pairs when they're just on one atom, or they can be bonding pairs when they're between two two atoms. The next thing you want to do is decide what the central atom for the molecule is. The central atom will never be hydrogen, and it's usually the first atom listed. So like in Chem 222, we said how carbon dioxide is always CO2, and it's not O2C, all right? There's a reason for the ordering of atoms. So in ammonia, the first atom, nitrogen, is probably going to be right. In ammonia's case, we definitely know it's right, because hydrogen can't be the central atom. It can never be the central atom. So in this one, we're going to have nitrogen in the middle and the hydrogens around the outside. A fancier way to describe the central atom is the atom of lowest electron affinity. It's least into electrons, and we'll talk about electron affinity more in this chapter later. So for all of these reasons, nitrogen is certainly going to be the central atom. Now, once we know what's in the middle, we have to have some way to connect the outer atoms to the inner atoms. And what we're going to do to connect the outer atoms to the inner atoms is we're going to put a bonding pair or a sigma bond. A sigma bond in this case is a single bond. It's just a pair of electrons connecting the outer atoms to the inner atoms. So you can see what we've done right there. We've drawn little sticks between the N and the H's. Those sticks, quote unquote, are a bonding pair. All right. It's a sigma bond. The atomic orbitals on N and H are smashing together to make them. That's the glue holding the hydrogens to the nitrogens. Each of those lines we drew was a pair of electrons. And if you remember from before, we had a total of four pairs. And we used up three pairs by drawing those three lines. So if you have any extra atoms running or electrons running around, you place them as lone pairs. Usually you put them on the outer atoms first and then the inner atom if there's anything left over. Hydrogen never has lone pairs. So in this case, the only one that can have it is the nitrogen. So notice here in this molecule, we have one, two, three bonding pairs, the lines. We have one lone pair, the dots there on top of the nitrogen. We have used up our four um, atoms. And if you look at the nitrogen, nitrogen has one, two, three bonding pairs. We predicted earlier that eight minus the group number would be the number of uh, bonding pairs around nitrogen. Sure enough, eight minus five one, two, three bonding pairs. So that's good. Also note that nitrogen has one, two, three bonding pairs plus a fourth uh, lone pair. That's the octet, all right? Nitrogen here is ha does have the octet. It's following it. Uh, despite all my warnings about, you know, exceptions and stuff like that, this nitrogen is following the rules no problem. So it's kind of cool. So what we've just drawn here then is the Lewis structure for ammonia. Pat yourself on the back. First Lewis structure down. Woohoo! Anyway, uh, we went through, we counted the number of valence electrons. We figured out what atom was in the middle. We connected the outer atoms to the inner atoms with a sigma bond. We then put lone pairs around the outer atoms first and then the single and then the middle atom. Hydrogen can't have any lone pairs, so it had to go there. And finally, we even kind of double checked ourselves. We made sure that 
that nitrogen has an octet. We made sure that nitrogen has three bonding pairs, which is what we predicted and stuff like that. Good to go. Um, in the companion or online is a handout called the Building Lewis Structures Handout. And I encourage you to check that out. It's just these rules written down again. So you can go back and look at them and stuff if you have more uh, questions. No problem. Here are four Lewis structures. And it says, which of the following Lewis structures are correct? Okay, if you see this kind of question, it usually has to do with where electrons are. Maybe the molecule has too many electrons or not enough electrons, hint, hint, hint. Now, what we saw in the last structure is that hydrogen only needs one bond, one bonding pair to be happy. And all of the hydrogens in structures one through four have one bond. So the problems here are not with the hydrogens, but the other thing is that the central atom really should have more often than not an octet. And that means four pairs. So if you look at a structure number one, which by the way is NH3, we just drew and you can see it's not right. Uh, one, two, three bonding pairs, but there's a, not a fourth pair. The octet is not there. And like I said, more often than not, you're gonna, we're gonna follow the octet rule. So this nitrogen has only three of four pairs. It does not have the octet. That's not a good structure. If you go to number two down there, all right, the oxygen has one and two bonding pairs, but oxygen usually needs the octet as well. And oxygen with only two of four pairs certainly does not have the octet. This is also not a good structure. Your oxygen doesn't have an octet. Number three over here, phosphorus, one, two, three pairs, three bonding pairs. All right, that's cool. Phosphorus also has a lone pair. So phosphorus is the first one of the central atoms to have a full octet. So at this point, there's no arguments about structure number three. It looks legit. Everything's got its electrons. Octets make molecules happy. We're going to see generally. That one looks okay. Number four, the hydrogen's okay. Fluorine has one bonding pair and one plus one, two lone pairs. So fluorine has three pairs around it. It also, though, doesn't have four pairs, the octet. So that's not a good structure either. So the only one here that's good is structure C. And again, we use the idea of the octet to see that. Now, again, in future lectures, it's going to be a little bit more complicated because we will look at some exceptions to the octet rule. But by default, most of these molecules will follow the octet rule. Uh, definitely number three does and the other ones do not. Good to go. Let's look at another example. This is uh, going to be the Lewis structure for sulfite. Sulfite is an ingredient that's in some wines as a preservative. Sulfite is also a polyatomic ion. It's related to sulfate, SO4 minus two, but this is sulfite. Okay, so going through the steps, we need to figure out the central atom. It's usually the first atom. It's always least electronegative. In this case, it's definitely gonna be sulfur. We need to count up the electrons as well. Now, the sulfur is in group six, so it's got six, and oxygen is in group six, so it has six. So six plus three times six, with no problem. But the other thing here I wanna point out is that this is an example of an ion. Now remember that negative ions have extra electrons. So sulfite has two extra electrons to add to the valence electrons. So in this molecule, you're gonna have six plus eight 18 plus 2, that's 26 valence electrons, or if you divide that by 2, 13 pairs. So now notice here that the ionic charge, those extra electrons are added in to the valence electrons. If you had a positively charged polyatomic ion, for example, NH4+, plus, you would take away an electron from NH4+. Plus. So notice here that negative is to add like a negative 
ion, you add the electrons, and a positive is to subtract. Ammonium, you subtract. It's kind of counterintuitive because our culture is so focused on money. <laughs> All right, like if you add money, you get more. And if you take away money, then you don't have as much. But it's the opposite with these. It's a little bit weird. Just remember, negative ions add. That's what we see more often than not. The next thing to do is to put sigma bonds connecting the outer atoms to the inner atoms. We're going to put a single bond between each of the oxygens and sulfur. Now we had 13 pairs total. Each of those lines is a pair, so 13 minus 3, 10 pairs left. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put lone pairs on the outside atoms first and put any, if they're left over, if there are any, on the inside. Now hydrogen doesn't get any lone pairs ever, so that wasn't a problem with ammonia. But here with this molecule, we definitely want to do it. So we're going to put three lone pairs around each of the oxygens. And if you do that, this is what you end up with. So oxygen, had, the one on the left there has one, two, three lone pairs, and the top one has three, and the bottom one has three. That's nine pairs, and we have a tenth pair. So in this case, we're going to put one lone pair there on the sulfur, and that's totally fine. It gives sulfur an octet. It, sulfur has three bonding pairs, three lines, and one lone pair, the dots. The oxygens have three lone pairs and one bonding pair, but everything here has an octet, and that's kind of what we're after. Here's just a little cheesy thing about sulfites. Um, they have, you know, 150 parts per million, apparently are in organic grapes wine, but if you don't buy organic wine, the sulfites can be 350 parts per million, which apparently is pretty good. We'll talk more about parts per million in a future chapter, but just think of it as a type of level to see how much. 350 is, of course, a lot more than 150. Um, the organic wine, uh, truly organic wine, should have less than 10 parts per million sulfites. Some people are allergic to these and stuff, so it kind of becomes important.